What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you and Chantal. I know you're going to watch this too. You watch all of us. We all appreciate it. Want to address a couple points with you tonight, okay? First thing I want to talk about is Julia. Why do you call Julia lazy? I understand you're an expert on being lazy, but this cat likely does far more than you do. Moreover, the cat is completely dependent on the two of you for care, and you refuse to make the right decisions for her. It's sad that you name call her. Second, Showing us Google searches doesn't do anything. If you feel like that somehow validates you doing what you want, it doesn't. The internet is a wealth of information and misinformation. You still have to be the final decision maker in the process. You have to decide what goes into your body. Showing us images that, that back up your poor decisions do very little. What you need to do is ask yourself, collectively, how have the decisions that you've made up until today treated you. So you can sit there and Google, is chocolate healthy? And then search around for the result that you want, and then post it and say, chocolate's healthy. Here's a post that says it. By all accounts, it works the other way, right? Cauliflower is traditionally deemed healthy, but I could Google something like, is cauliflower unhealthy? And I'll get a list of people that will tell me not to overindulge in it because it can create issues with my digestive system or bloating. So for the very reason people are not telling you to choose chocolate over cauliflower is the same reason that people are not impressed by your Google search results. You know, most of this truly comes down to common sense, serving sizes, and respecting your body. Now, number three... I want to talk about you throwing Salah under the bus, because this had never happened until today. He asked you if you minded about getting the junk food. This tells us that he gave you the choice. According to you, he actually even objected. He says, oh no, I probably shouldn't. Now, I understand there's a lot of people here that don't like Salah, question his intentions, question the relationship, all of these things. But we also have to understand this tells us a lot about his mindset. He clearly knew the sweets were a bad idea to the point he objected, and he knew they would put her at risk, and he didn't want them in the house to the point that he was actually willing to do without himself. And it's also really important for us to understand, he didn't come into the video and speak for himself. This was her reciting his words. And how did Chantal respond to those words? Well, she said, you know what? Yes, you can. That's fine. Because she wanted them in the house. And let's better understand why. Because the other day, when she broke the water fast with the noodles that she knew were bad, she said she had no choice. She had to eat what they had. Didn't have anything quick. So it's very likely the chocolate, which you proclaimed would last him forever, and to that point, why did he need a lifetime supply of chocolate November 24th? If he eats it so sparingly, could he have not just gotten into the Wish SUV and drove off wherever he wanted? He can drive, you can't, and get the chocolate that he desired? Eat it in the car? I mean, if a little bit falls, the seats still have plastic, right? Chantal, I've got a serious question for you. What do you think would be received worse? A good faith effort for you to get your health back on track with mixed results or simply arguing with the advice others give you while clearly being dishonest about your goals and progress. I really would love to know your response to that in a, in a video, if you could. You know, I don't watch a whole lot of HFC, but I watch enough to know what's going on. And Chantal, if you were going to choose a single person to follow, I would look for you to choose her. Start every video watching what she's doing. Learn from her mistakes. She's very open about her mistakes, and the criticisms that her community provides. Because she tried to start on a health journey, right? And this was met with a lot of criticisms. Her views actually diminished greatly. She took a fair amount of time to see if they would turn around, and she came to the conclusion, listen, I cannot sustain my lifestyle with the decrease in views, and I have to go back to mukbangs. Now, despite all that, she is still finding success in her health. She's also finding success in her views, proving that, at least to her, there can be this happy medium of the fundamentals of going out and eating what she wants on camera, even if it appears to not be healthy, but also the ability to be successful in getting her health back. And I think this most recent week shows that it's a testament. It can work.
I mean, during the holiday season of all times. You know, but the problem is this requires her to be honest with both herself, her community, what she's eating. So you don't do these things. When you say that you still, quote, have a lot of um, fruits and veggies in today's haul, you know, where were those fruits and veggies when you were the other day breaking the water fast, eating those noodles that you knew were bad? Now, you know, on Chantel's side, we always get those same inconsistencies, those same broken promises. Where are the weigh-ins? Where are the blood sugar readings? You know, but let's talk about, though, what is consistent. What is consistent is how you speak to everyone, how you label and degrade your bread and butter, the viewer, not actual bread and butter. I know you would never degrade them, but your actual viewer, forcing so many of them over to channels like mine, other reaction channels, because they refuse to patronize someone that's treated them so poorly. Let, let's go back and let's say this first comment here. People legit name calling are getting mad as ridiculous. You know, Chantal, many of those people are simply making common sense conclusions based on the last 24 hours. You did a self-proclaimed water fast. You woke up with, with probably stomach cramps. You decided to eat food you admitted you knew was bad for you because you just wanted to eat what was there, eat what was fast. And then two days later during a grocery haul, you admit that you had those healthy options stocked up in the house, but instead you chose bad foods. And then Sala asked you not to get bad foods because he knew that could happen again, but you decided this was the perfect time to test your willpower. That's why people get frustrated. From there you cite, imagine being called names because you got sweet potatoes. Again, this is finding the simplest base in an argument, right? This is no different than someone driving 100 miles an hour in a school zone and saying, imagine getting pulled over for speeding. You know, you remove all the context of what you did solely to make yourself seem like this unjustified victim. You have a whole comment section full of people pleading, begging you to stop eating starches, and you refuse. These people are giving you practical advice because they trust that you are in the worst health you have ever been in, and in most cases, are tired of seeing you, as you described it, harming yourself with food. You take the same stance whenever a viewer brings up suggestions. This one says, listen, you have too much dairy, sodium, red meat. At the end of the day, Chantal, it's not about responding to, it's meat and veggies, how about I eat air? Which again, goes right back to the same removing of context. No one is telling you to just eat air. They're telling you to look at what you're doing. A simple Google search, Chantal. Dairy and insulin resistance. Red meat and insulin resistance. You know, when you're told the truth, you can see the confusion you have. Web searches. Lack of a formal diet plan. Lack of a medical professional guiding you. You lash out. How do you know what I did? You're mad I'm not doing what you think I should. Firstly, Chantal, would you ever have made such uncertain selections if you actually had proper guidance? And would you also not be the first one to start every video with, my doctor told me? Aside from just the choices you make, like 24 Reese cups coming in the home, air would have been a better option. And when you're told to stop monetizing your behavior, your response is, you have the right to monetize your life. Actually, Chantal, you have a privilege to monetize your life. And videos like this are putting not just that, the monetization, but also your life at risk. But let's talk about what Chantal wants to see, right? What did she love to see? Really good haul. Did your research. Great job. You latch on to that. When in reality, Chantal, you need advice from a professional. You claimed yourself you were going to have a serious medical event. Googling all day to justify eating the same junk that puts you into this position is not the answer, but it's what you're doing. And you double down on this nonsense when someone projects your half-hearted attempts fall on deaf ears because we have wide eyes. When told sodium is sodium, Given a discussion about hypertension, you are again begged to see a doctor. Now, this person doesn't get the, 
how do you know I didn't go response? But rather a, you have to include a bit of sodium. Chantal, I never salt my food. You really don't need to add sodium to everything. You'll get plenty of natural salt. And if you don't, there's a lifetime supply of salt, truly, that you just bought for yourself. It comes down to proper eating. Mindful eating. Sensible portions. Common sense. I can pretty much assure you, any of your viewers, myself included, would never, ever bring 24 Reese cups at one time into the home. Because I know the first thing I'm going to do is eat a pack. And then a couple hours later, eat another pack. And say, well, I won't eat another pack because I'll just have one a day. And even though I ate one at 11 o'clock and I ate one at 2 a.m., and they were like four hours apart. It was still technically different days, so it's okay. I'm just not going to have one until tomorrow. And then before you know it, Chantal, they're all gone. We get it. Junk food is meant to taste good. Right? I've never woke up and said, man, I can't wait to dig into a whole bunch of broccoli. But I have woke up and said, man, it'd be really good to have a donut and a coffee right now. You ever wonder why when you go into Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks, they never have broccoli-flavored, kale-flavored, spinach-flavored? Because people don't like those flavors, Chantal. They want chocolate. They want caramel. They want the good stuff. And by that, I mean the good stuff. Not the healthy stuff, but the good stuff. It's really simple, Chantal. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the effort. You have to put in the time. Because that's what's at stake here. Time. The rest of time that you have is at stake on what you're doing. In putting together these junk calls, throwing some images up from Google searches, and then throwing your flippers at anybody that dare question what you're doing and try to help you. I am constantly brought back to Jen. Constantly. Because so many people reach out to her with the best of intentions. So many people reached out to her with practical advice. And she told them no. And I cannot forget the day she came home from the hospital. She did the video laying from the bed. And everyone collectively was horrified. And you know who we blamed? Gene. How could he let that happen? And you're putting Sala in the same exact position. But today we learned He's actively, to some degree, trying to stop it and trying to help you. You are refusing all help from everyone. And therefore, for the most part, I think this time, people are going to have the feeling that they did everything they could, they tried everything they could try, and you are beyond help. I'm going to leave you with the top comments from the last video. Appreciate you watching this one. Be back as soon as I can with more content.